Honey, you're too good to me. Thank you for the pancakes and blueberries and them. Garrett's spoiling me because I had a nightmare last night. I'm glad you were here though because normally you're at work by this time. Or by the time I had it. Go touch a button. Good. Cool. Up, up, up. Touch the button. Good boy. Touch the button. Yes. Good. So I bit my tongue pretty bad during a seizure. I don't know. So, I'm just dying. I just not feel like that good right now. I got blood all over, and I peed, and there's blood everywhere all over me. Everywhere. And then on top, I wash up. I've finally been cleaned up a little bit. She came in and gave me a wet rag, and that was it. So I wiped out the blood all over my arms and my face and my mouth. I'm biting my tongue by myself. And now I don't know what I'm supposed to do about the soiled sheets that I'm laying in for the last two hours. So I guess I'll ask them again. I've now been here for two hours and the only thing that I got from them was a wet washcloth to wipe the blood from biting my tongue off my face, kind of wipe my mouth out a little bit, and that's it. This whole bed is covered in dirt and blood and pee, and my pants are also covered in pee and my underwear. So I'm sitting in a soap bed for the last two hours. I was very out of it for a good chunk of that, but they have not even tried to help me clean up myself. I'm just sitting in here like some... <sighs> I have to have grace. I feel like crap, guys. Seriously, the medical healthcare system needs to get their shit together. Because I had... Pee and blood all over me for the last two hours and no one has come in to help me clean myself even though I have asked many people and I understand they can be busy but nobody should be sitting in their pee for two hours that's ridiculous I've gone through stuff like this before at the same hospital <sighs> the medical care system just sucks I mean they're in here making sure that I have two accesses because my seizures are that bad and that's like mandatory and they're uh, almost about to give me an IO which is a bone a bone IV it's hard to explain and all that stuff medically they got everything set up but all the like 
cosmetic make the patient comfortable things they could give care shit about. Like I literally am sitting on the other my, on the edge of my bed trying not to sit in my pee. But I can't even lay down and rest because there's pee in my bed. And there's pee on me. And Colt can't come up on the bed either because then there will be pee on him. And this is just not fair. I mean, I don't... I, do they really even care? Like, I'm a human too and I don't want to sit in my own pee. I know... I, I know... It's, it's monotonous or whatever. I keep hearing that word somewhere else and now I said it. Um, and uh, to keep cleaning up pee or whatever. Because I'm sure you have a lot of patients or whatever. And it's not like I'm not going to help as much as I can. I just really think that it's sad to leave someone sitting in that. When they can't help themselves and have a seizure and that happens. So. I don't know. They seem to be really busy today anyway. There's only one person in here sticking me uh, many, many times. And I think their rule is they're only allowed to do two. So I think they're short-staffed and they just let her do however many. I don't even know when I'm getting on video. But honestly, I don't really care to vlog that much in the hospital. But I just thought that this was important for you to know on the shit that happens in the hospitals some crazy stuff whether you know you have a visible or invisible or you have a service dog or you don't have a service dog there's always some kind of issue but the healthcare system has gone to crap so at least they gave me seizure medications emergency seizure medications um uh intramuscularly through the iv and nasally because apparently the seizures were really bad i was seizing for like I think they said 15 minutes till they got there and then when they got there I started coming around a little bit but wasn't lucid and I went back into a seizure and then from that point on they gave me the nasal spray I'm thinking um, as a seizure med and then at that point I seized a little bit more so they gave me the intermuscular shot or whatever and then I think I was good for a while, and then they put me in the ambulance and everything. Once I got in the ambulance, I had more seizures, and Colt's trying to alert and everything, and there was a whole lot of crazy stuff going on. Crazy. It was driving me nuts. People are like, um, the service dog can't go in the ambulance. And I was like, oh, yes, he can. And kind of had to, like, loopily fight for myself, but I was thankful that one of the fire department guys that know me really well was there and he was like oh no he goes every time he's he's a legitimate service dog he does his job and then once they let me up on the gurney and then they loaded him up like he basically loads himself up then all of them like looked at each other and they were like oh yeah he is a real service dog because I was like god because a fake service dog has caused so many problems for us the fake service dogs cause so many problems for us, and that could have been one of them. The reason that they're scared of a dog that was pooping everywhere, and a dog that was barking, and all that. So, oh man, I need to rest. I can't even lay back down in this bed because it's, like, gushy. And this is not fair. I need them to come. I need them to just come fucking treat me like a human being. I just want to be I just want to be treated like a human being I don't think anybody would like to sit around in their pee so I'm just emotional and tired I get that way after my seizures where everything's just ten times harder and I cry more and angry more and stuff so I just need to realize that that's probably what it is I just I do want to be treated like somebody not an invisible person okay I'm gonna go I'm not feeling good
I give Colt some of the more filling treats when stuff like this happens where I didn't get to feed him his dinner before I was rushed to the hospital. So he got a yummy um, big bone and he's it'll tide him over. It's not a replacement for food, it just kind of tides him over. And I'm, a, I'm the official treat holder when we're in the hospital. Huh, hold. I like to hold your treats for you. So finally I had a sweet woman come in and help change me fully, wipe down my body, put me on, you know, those cheap scrubs. Um, and so that I could get my soiled underwear and pants off and put them in a bag. Um, my shirt was fine, it didn't have anything on it, so I'm still wearing that. And um, I even got to put my pillowcase on the pillow, it makes me happy. Um, reading it and everything. Even when stuff is hard, just try and find the little things that make you happy. The little things that can bring some brightness into this world, because it's very dark sometimes. And a lot of struggles are going on right now. And it's frustrating, but I need to have grace. Um, Colt didn't even get to eat dinner, so it completely, you know, medical stuff completely interferes with normal day activities. My poor dog didn't even get to eat. So I brought some treats are always in my wheelchair backpack for him. So I gave him a big bone to satisfy his hunger and just as a treat for being such a good boy, he was helping pick up some of the trash and some of my stuff when my socks fell and stuff, picking a lot for me. So he's been a champ and I am gonna go before this phone hits me in the face because I'm so tired. So far, I've been six hours seizure free. I'm thankful for that and ready to go home because I live the normal life with seizures. These were just extremely bad and they were just not stopping. Even with the um, emergency medication they were giving, they were just not stopping. So I'm glad that they're over now, hopefully. And. So six hours free, hopefully many more to go free as well. So I will be heading home soon because after a certain amount of hours of my seizures being free, um, my doctor's plans is for me to be able to go home and try and manage me from home, which I obviously don't want to be in the hospital and they know that, so this is the plan and I'm gonna go home and try and rest. So it's been a few days since I was in the hospital, but I re-watched the stuff that was on my phone. Honestly, I don't even remember taking that, but I'm glad that I did because I feel like it's very educational and um, just very important to be shown. So I'm glad I have that, even though it was really hard to make sense, I'm sure, like I was, I don't even remember filming that and part of the time I'm like filming my chin so I hope that you find some kind of lesson in that video um, with what I was going through but I did realize that there was not much explanation on to how I ended up in the hospital sometimes I forget to vlog um, because of my brain injury what I'm doing and then I get footage of what I'm doing or maybe I remember to vlog what I'm gonna be doing and then I forget to actually vlog while I'm doing it so um, it's hard to vlog with a brain injury and then there's also when I go to edit there's times where I forget to put certain things in so sometimes I'll just add stuff into the vlog that was actually from a previous day but I had forgotten to add it in and it makes the vlog seem more whole and I feel like it's perfectly fine because um, I shouldn't be too hard on myself. I'm just excited that I'm able to have these memories and see the vlogs later on. Um, I've already had so many things that I've gone back and watched and it makes me happy because I had already forgotten that. 
So a little bit of an explanation to how I just ended up in the hospital from being on a walk. Um, Colt alerted. I took my medication. He alerted a second time, which meant that the medication didn't kick in in time and wasn't going to prevent the seizures. So I laid down in the grass and I called my friend to let her know that um, that's what was happening because normally there's always communication. I'm normally never alone, but on the few times that I am, I do have independence because of my service dog. I have points of contact that I call and make sure that they know where I am, what's going on. They stay on the phone with me. If Colt's barking or there's an issue, then they know it and they know where I am and they send help. So that's what happened. I um, was having really bad cluster seizures, really long seizures, and I ended up in status for 12 minutes or something. Um, which is where you have a non-stop seizure and anything over five minutes is considered status. If you go directly into another seizure without fully coming conscious from the other one, that's also considered status. And it's extremely dangerous. Your body depletes everything. Um, and lack of oxygen is really dangerous too. So I definitely am thankful that everything's fine it is kind of a reality in my life though um, my seizures sometimes just are really bad and so that's what happened I'm home and doing good I have had you know a few bad seizures and stuff but it's just life and I'm really hopeful that my video can make a difference in the world because it was very hard to be treated that way and even though I don't remember that much and there are a lot of times that I am treated that way and I don't remember it it's really important to have someone there to advocate for you when you cannot at all advocate for yourself especially if you have a service dog and they try to take the service dog away or say the service dog can't be there or something like that it's really hard to advocate yourself when you're in that situation so it's really important to have someone there to advocate for you and lately in the state that I live in, the healthcare system has just been awful. And it's because so many people have been abusing it. There is a lot of drug activity, people trying to get medication drugs and actual street drugs and stuff like that. And it's caused a really hard time when you go to an ER. Um, and then there's also the fact that in my state they have let go an extreme amount of medical professionals and so now um, the hospital that's actually closest to me has probably 25% of the staff that it used to like an extreme amount of people were let go um, there used to be nurses and doctors walking the halls the entire time and when I'm there it's rare to see one it's pretty crazy like I don't know what's going on but I'm kind of scared that the hospital might shut down so which would be a bummer because the reason I live where I do is because I have to be so close to a hospital there's literally one right across the street and I have to live close to a hospital because of how bad my health is so I don't know but I hope this video helps anybody that it can and I'm thankful for you guys caring and being supportive and all the prayers and everything that you sent my way and I will talk to you guys later.